Hey, what's going on, folks? This is Keith, and you're watching Barbara's Auto Help. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, today, I've got my old rust bucket here, and I'm going to be going over one of the most common things or common symptoms that I have to deal with as a technician, and that is a vibration or pulsation while braking. Now, typically, and I will say typically because sometimes this can be caused by something else other than what I'm about to mention here, but typically, it's caused by either warped up rotors or out of round rear brake drums. Now, just for simplicity and to narrow down this video a little bit, I'm just gonna be concerned about brake rotors and how to diagnose a vibration caused by brake rotors. Now, the textbook way to diagnose a warpage in your rotors is to use what's called a dial indicator. And I know a lot of you don't own this and are probably not gonna buy a dial indicator to figure this problem out. So I'm gonna show you how to use this at the end, but first I'm gonna show you or explain to you how I usually diagnose where the vibration is coming from. Because you wanna you wanna find out whether it's the front rotors or the rear rotors causing your pulsation so that way you can address the problem in the right area there. So the solution for it, of course, is to turn the rotor. So we need to find out if it's the front or the back rotors you need to turn. And oh, by the way, you don't have to have a brake lathe either to do this. You can turn your rotors if, uh, if you're a DIY guy on the weekend. Um, you just have to take them off your vehicle, send it down to the part store, and have them turn it for you. Uh, not every part store will turn rotors, so call them ahead of time. Make sure that they do have a brake lathe there and that they can turn the rotors for you. You can also have a, uh, a shop turn the rotors for you. So getting back to how I diagnose whether the front rotors or the rear rotors are warped up. Uh, and the way that I do that is while driving the vehicle, I pay attention to how the car feels and I try to get an idea where the vibration is coming from. And the way I do that is I watch the steering wheel. Uh, typically, when you hit the brakes and you feel the, the pulsation, the vibration, and it's the front rotors that are warped up, it's gonna translate back up through the steering wheel. So your steering wheel is probably gonna shake back and forth like this. Uh, and the reason that happens is because when your rotor's warped up, it's it's rotating, but it's kind of flopping around like this, if you will, just a little bit. So that, that in and out motion right there, when the, the caliper is activated and grabs that rotor, that wobbling motion is gonna transfer to the caliper, then in turn it's gonna transfer to the steering linkage, and then back up to the steering wheel, causing your wheel to kind of do that number right there. Now, if your rear rotors are warped up, you're typically not going to feel it in your steering wheel. You're more or less going to feel it in your seat. You're still going to get that uh, 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 but your steering wheel is not going to be doing this number, typically. Uh, you're just going to be feeling it in your butt. So that's how I diagnose whether it's the front or the back. Now I will say this, uh, this method is kind of a guesstimation, but uh, to be honest with you, I don't use a dial indicator to diagnose warped up brake rotors. and I don't see any of the guys in my shop that I work at use dial indicators for warped up rotors. Uh, we only break out the dial indicator for a vibration when it's like the last resort. Uh, usually we, we kind of get an idea where the warpage is coming from and then we attack that, that portion of the vehicle and we get pretty good luck with that. But you can get burned. For instance, I had a, uh, a truck uh, one day and I felt a vibration in the seat. so. Immediately I thought it was just the rear rotors warped up, so I went ahead and turned the rear rotors and replaced the pads back there. And come to find out, it was still doing it. It was the front rotors causing that, and it didn't actually translate through the steering wheel. So you can be burned using this method, so just be careful. I just want to throw the caveat out there. Um, this method does take a little bit of experience, and even when you got experience, you could still be wrong. Case in point, my pickup truck. So <laughs> just want to throw that out there for you. So let's go ahead and get to this dial indicator and I'll show you how to hook that up and uh, check for warpage in your rotor. So this is a typical setup for a dial indicator. I've got my base connected to a nice secure object that's not going to move around whenever we rotate this rotor here. Uh, now this right here is not normal. My clamp just broke on me so I got this jerry rigged <laughs> to hold the dial indicator on there for you so you can see this. We got our connector uh, hooked up and tightened down so that way this isn't flopping around. It's nice and secure there. And uh, you can see here that this plunger is pushed up just a little bit. This black piece isn't sitting on the base there. So whenever there is any movement, that plunger can go up and down or in and out just like that right there. And we won't get a false reading. Uh, 
Now there's something I want you to notice with this setup here. I've got the uh, plunger kind of out towards the outside of the rotor. It's still in the nice shiny part here. Don't put it on the rust because it's going to bounce all over the place when you rotate it. But the furthest out that you can get it is probably the best because they tend to warp up the most on the outside of the rotor than they do on the inside of the rotor. So that being said, it's not a bad idea to check it in several different places, but normally it warps up the most, or you'll get the most play out here on the outer edge. Now something else to mention here, you see that I've got a rotor hub assembly. So this rotor is a part of the hub, so it's already fixed to the vehicle there. Some vehicles are equipped with slide-on rotors, and in that case, the rotor needs to be secured to the hub. Uh, or else it's just going to be flopping around when you're rotating the rotor. So take you some lug nuts or something and run them down on the uh, the lug studs here and try to secure that rotor to the hub before you start rotating it to check for uh, for warpage there or else you're going to get a false breeding. So we got it hooked up. We can see where our uh, needle is at. It looks like it's at about 34 right now. Now what I'm going to do while watching that needle is I'm going to rotate this this rotor and I'm going to look for that needle to to move if I have any warpage. And we moved about two two thousandths roughly so far. About three. back at about 34-ish. So roughly two-ish, three-ish thousandths of, uh, of play there. So yeah, this rotor isn't really warped up. Typically when you got a warped up rotor that's causing a vibration issue, you're going to see a lot of warpage in it with the dial indicator there. Whether or not that warpage is going to be translated as a vibration into the, the chassis or the body or the steering system, it's all relative to, to what vehicle you got. But if you have a vibration when braking and you narrowed it down to either the front or the back and you notice you got a lot of play there, that's probably going to be the rotor that's warped up and that rotor will either need to be resurfaced or the rotor will need to be replaced. A lot of folks go for just replacing the rotors. Now I will say this, if you do decide to have your rotors refinished, you need to mic them before they're refinished. There is a minimum thickness specification in, a, in your manual and you don't want to go below that minimum thickness. Uh, on some vehicles they actually have a minimum thickness and a minimum turn to thickness. So they don't want you to turn the rotors down below a certain thickness so that you got a little, a little bit of meat left on them for the brakes to operate and they, they can bed in and wear down a little bit more there. So keep that in mind there. Measure your rotors before you turn them and also measure them after you turn them to make sure you're still within specification before you put the rotor back on your vehicle there. If your rotors are below that specification to begin with, just replace your rotors, don't bother turning them. If they're below the specification after refinishing them, you'll have to replace them. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a vibration upon braking can not only be caused by warped up rotors, but other things too. So please keep that in mind when you're looking at this. This video is only designed to help you to diagnose a vibration when braking caused by warped up brake rotors, nothing else. Now, two other things to mention here. Your rotors, some of your slide on rotors, they'll either slide up on a hub assembly or up on an axle flange. A lot of times if you have a loose wheel bearing, that can cause a vibration when braking. Also, if you have a bent axle, that can also cause a vibration when braking. See, these rotors slide over those components, and if those components are wobbling like that, that wobble is going to translate out into the rotor too and cause a very similar vibration. Also, I've seen vibrations that have been caused by uh, loose steering components too, or loose ball joints. Now, if you're suspicious that any warpage measurement that you may be getting with your dial indicator while checking your rotors on the vehicle may be caused by another component such as a loose wheel bearing or a, a bent axle. You can always take the rotor off and then put it onto a brake lathe, which most of you don't have, 
but uh, you can go to a part store, put it on the brake lathe, and uh, once it's on the brake lathe, that the arbor on the brake lathe is true. So uh, once this is set up, spin the rotor. If you see the, you can put your dial indicator back on it. If you see the warpage still there, then you know you do in fact have warped up brake rotors. Go ahead and turn them or replace them. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, just comment down below there. Also, please read the entire description of this video before you apply any of this knowledge or attempt any of this. There's more very important information down there that you need to know before you do this. Please read that, guys. As always, please like and subscribe, and thank you again.